We here at, in Maine at the uh, Energy Utilities and Technology Committee, some talk about the lobby that is interested in seeing transmission developed further than Ohio, uh, maybe all the way out to the, the Dakotas to bring power to serve the load in the east, which leads me to a question for our panelists. Um, is this gaining any traction? What does it mean for us here? We, we looked at that issue specifically when we did a study in 2009 for the New England governors. They wanted to imagine some pretty aggressive wind development scenarios in New England, and it was to counteract some of the efforts at the national level to promote wind from the Midwest. And the sense was New England has the heavy load, but we don't have significant renewables. That was the, the premise. And therefore, we needed to support transmission to the Midwest because they had the renewable resources. What we found is that New England actually has more than enough uh, renewable capability here to meet our own goals. And when we started looking at the cost of transmission, uh, the cost of the renewables from the Midwest plus the transmission to bring it to the border was by far more expensive than any of the scenarios we looked at within New England for developing resources locally, in part because the offshore wind had such high capacity factors. They were very good resources. Yeah, the, um, uh, not only is it the cost factor, which I totally agree with you, Eric, um, but think about uh, getting the right-of-way permits from 10,000 landholders. And uh, I don't know, uh, a, a well-placed person within PJM uh, said, uh, who's younger than I am, uh, said that it'll never happen in his lifetime. And I, I think that that uh, is, is true. Although, uh, I think we should be very much aware that, uh, uh, I'll just mention him by name, I don't know how politic it is to do that, but uh, John Norris, uh, commissioner from Iowa, is very much of a feeling that it's possible for his home state of Iowa to produce electricity, uh, wind generation, and move it uh, and to build that transmission uh, to the, to the uh, east. And uh, PJM itself uh, has, uh, is going through scenario planning. Uh, PJM runs from you know, New Jersey and Virginia, the East Coast, all the way out to Chicago. And uh, they, they have a scenario that has at least 30,000 megawatts of uh, uh, onshore wind being generated. And there isn't a market in the Midwest for 30,000 megawatts of, of wind. So there's a high level of desire from their part to figure out how to get it to the east. And I know that there's work going on uh, as to, well, could, could you by fixing a, a, a line here, adding a line there, just a short one, uh, doing other things to beef up the grid to enable more, uh, onshore wind to reach the East Coast, uh, that's, that's being worked on and that should be of concern to everybody in the, in the Northeast and in the Mid-Atlantic. Uh, so. Next question, Mr. Scummy. Yes, uh, I'm Francois Rabello from uh, Quebec. Um, uh, I don't know what you think of this position, maybe I, I could have it. Uh, the idea that the ideal would be to have a, an intermittent uh, green energy like wind energy combined with a stable, you know, but another kind of green energy, maybe, maybe hydro, which is less, uh, with less green, green gas emission than uh, oil or uh, coal. So uh, to combine both would be very efficient in terms of green, ga green, ga green gas emission, sorry, and also in terms of e efficiency. Uh, so uh, do you think uh, uh, if you look at it globally, we should work to to uh, in this way, and uh, if we could think of a better partnership between the hydro of Quebec in the north and the, the wind energy on the east coast to make sure that we don't need, you know, any more uh, coal or uh, oil, you know, or uh, green, you know, other, uh, other energy. Well, it's primarily a question for you, Eric, but I, I want to just compliment you on uh, the, the kind of vision that you articulated. Uh, the, uh, the, the hydro energy in Quebec 
uh, is absolutely uh, the finest uh, complement to uh, the, re the variability issue that uh, is raised by renewable energy. Yeah, um, I'd like to compliment him too on the vision, but I'm afraid he's not the first one that's thought of this. Uh, the International Energy Agency has a, an annex that is, has been looking at integration of wind and hydropower. Uh, their report, which was issued, I think, a year ago, uh, came out with a very positive, complementary, uh, technical results saying that uh, when wind is down, hydro's up, when, hy when, the, when the water levels of hydro are down, the wind is up. There's, I'm just generalizing the findings. If anybody's interested, uh, the reports usually get posted on the IEA uh, website. Um, and I can get you in touch with the uh, folks that did the study.